of applause to welcome Mr. Amit Gupta, uh, Chief Architect and Urbanist from Architecture Discipline. He's led multiple architecture and urbanism projects over the past 21 years. He brings extensive experience to his role um, as an architect at Architecture Discipline. He graduated from the TVB School of Habitat Studies in 2000, following which he obtained a Master's in Architecture and Urbanism from the Architectural Association School of Architecture in London. Just one moment. <laughs> His core disciplinary uh, interests include architecture and urbanism, responsive habitats, parametric design, and augmented design communication. He's a visiting faculty at the Sushant School of Art and Architecture and directs the Adaptive Habitats Lab at the college. He also actively participates in design juries across schools in India. Welcome, and we are super excited for your presentation. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's been a long day, yeah? And I'm, the good thing about presenting last is everything which one could present or talk about is already written or spoken about. So the pressure is lesser. And at the same time, I think I'm touching on a topic which is called working with timber, uh, which is slightly different where I say, OK, a lot of discussions have happened around we love wood. Everybody in this hall, I think, loves wood, right? Is there anybody who doesn't love wood? By the end of the day, I think we all are wood converts, right? <laughs> so much so that we might say, oh, now I want to live in wood. But I am living in a city like Delhi where I don't get to breathe properly, and I want to live in wood. So I would rather have the wood with me, so I'll embrace the wood. And I would say, OK, urban cities, I can't go one night. I mean, let's face the reality. I will not go to the forest. I will not go and live in the wood. But I can embrace the wood and get the wood back to the city as the life's not going to change. We are still going to be city dwellers. By 2050, it's envisaged more than 75 to 80 percent of the world population is going to be cities, urban population. And skyscrapers and tall buildings and wooden skyscrapers are going to, going to make a comeback, right? So I would say. We are a young studio. Architecture discipline is a very young studio. And a few years back, we said we have to be a conscious studio. I'm a, I'm a director of an adaptive habitat studio, and which dwells very heavily on ecology. And I joined architecture discipline, and we started investigating alternative approaches. And CLT, JLT, all we came across. And we said, let's, let's try and understand the material the best we can and work with it. You know, there they will, will be always positives and negatives, to's and fro's and arguments against and, but we decided to aggressively work with it. And uh, so my presentation over here would be divided into two parts. One is a case study, which I'm gonna show how working with the timber made us more evolved and I think there were some panel discussions recently, uh, which I heard, where I also realized that we are talking about timber as we are going to still work with the same tools. No, we are not going to work with the same tools ever. Our craftsmen are going to evolve. Our machines are going to evolve. The machines are our new tools. So we have to embrace, I mean, this city has given one of the leading architects of the world, which is Shajay Bhushan, I guess, some people know him. And uh, he's just completed, a, I think, a pre, uh, Zaha code. The Reche code has just completed a totally pre printed, 3D printed bridge, right? And in timber, and CNC, and timber, and robotics, using robotics. So our tools, we have to fall in love with our love, new age tools. So the combination, uh, so I'm still going to present what we are doing, but towards the end of the presentation, there is also a segment what I'm doing with my, with, when we have collaborated with Sushant School of Architecture and what new has Timber offered us. So let me begin my presentation. You are great. Okay, so we are a progressive studio and we look to create 
newer directions and newer ideation. This is us. This is a young team, and uh, now. This I don't think we have to talk about. I think everybody has talked about it. That carb, what would carbon emissions and everything. So I'm going to skip. But what we will talk about is when we started working with mass timber, we decided to understand mass timber. What is working with mass timber would be like, and to work with any material and not only mass timber or CLT. I think you have to know the material. Then only you can fall in love with the material. Whether it's concrete, whether it's steel, you have to fall in love with the material. These are all man-made materials. Yes, timber is a natural material, but timber is not a natural material. Tim wood is a natural material. That also is clear to all of us. Timber or seasoned wood, the moment you lay your hand on a wood and shape it, it's a man-crafted material. So we have to start accepting that we are going to do synthetic interventions because that's what we're constructing. So when we started looking at it, we wanted to look at what we could do with CLD. How will it touch, how will the joinery be? How would it, it interface with the glass? How would it interface in various different materials? And we just wanted to test, see how we can do the projects which we would want to do in future because in the future, our cities are going to ask us to do work with these materials sooner or later. The policies are coming in. The governments are getting more active in terms of understanding ecology and having interventions, which are basically around adaptive habitats. So we went in also into understanding what could be done with the forms, newer forms, what can we generate newer forms of expression in work. Can we, we all know, sorry, we all have, we can, I mean, everybody has from the morning, we know, goods and bad and knowledge, I'm not going to skip this guy. But this is what we started with, when we started with some early prototypes. And we said, okay, we all want to live in the woods, we want to get the wood back to our city, so can our city products, the foot over bridges, become mass timber? So we did this prototype for the Bailey government, which is now going to go under construction. We did a bus stop prototype, also in mass timber, and which is also going to go into production. We have already been commissioned for 20 of these in the city of Delhi. And these are going to look like this, right? So the, this was the first step towards looking at timber as something which we can bring back to the cities, right? We can, I can choose to go back and live in hills and do vernacular expression and live in very nice cottages. But how do I get people to live See, what has happened, in, according to me, is that years, it will take years for people, for population, larger population, larger laymen, I mean, not architecture, architects, to understand what, should, what is it to live with wood. Uh, many panelists, and I love the panel discussion when there, there is an expression of how everybody is so passionate about wood, right? I want, I am in love with wood. There is no denial about it. I like, I found, find wood beautiful, but who is this I? This I is this set of people. Does a craftsman want to live in a wood, wooden house? Does an artisan is actually expecting to live in a wooden house? A guy who is a mason, is he expecting to live, live in a wooden house? Can he, can he actually live in a wooden house? Because he doesn't know the material, right? So once we bring this to his consciousness back again, I guess our cities, our people, we will start accepting wood, right? And we will work to make, work harder to make it more economical. So we did this, and we got lucky as a studio that we found a client, and I'm going to just go to the case study out in Goa, who actually allowed us to build something which I would say is not a hybrid structure, but it is almost safe. I mean, it, it is still hybrid because the foundations are concrete. Uh, but we did get commissioned by a passionate uh, client who wanted to do his whole house in timber. And uh, we were lucky and fortunate to work with industrial 
uh, industrial specialists who would want to contribute into this project at a nominal cost because they also wanted to basically allow people to build with work. And uh, the process, the usual design architect's process we followed, we followed the site was very close to the, to the west coast and uh, it's, uh, it's a more, most beautiful site with the contours. We followed a very simple process of our, how we can align the views and how we can not, uh, we can make a way, the idea was to make a very light expression and that's where we also very, got very confident that can we do something which is very light on the landscape, which does not disturb the terrain. We don't have to dig much, we don't have to do a lot of damage to the casual terrain. Would allow us, so we did usual studies, I'm not going to go deeper into this because all of us know here what it means. But I would want to come back to the fact that I would, I'm running, this is just a part of the process, plan, simple plan. But I'm going to come back to where it started being more fun. And the fun started where the process was detailed out, where the whole construction methodology, we sat with the people who were going to build this and we worked out each and every step with them. So it was almost a collaborative effort, an interdisciplinary collaborative effort, which I think as architects we take a position of being some, at some higher position and we don't really collaborate. And I mean, some crafts, I mean, we, we do want to turn into craftsmen, but why do we want to turn into craftsmen? Why can't we work with the craftsmen? And, industri and now the new age craftsmen are the industry, industrial practitioners who know their machines. So let's work with them. So this was very interesting because we went, made our drawings with the people, let the whole thing develop, and then even went to the extent of going to the industry factories, working out the members, looking at the structural design with them, and uh, participating almost at every step of this production. Getting the portals, knowing the joinery, participating with the team at site, getting it going at the site, and finally getting it, the structure going. Then moving further from there, going ahead, and understanding what could be the cladding material. I'll just go ahead. I think it's going to play the video. And finally, it starts looking like this. And now it's begun to look like this, and it's almost getting completed and should be completed within the next two months. And this gave us a lot of confidence, and I think now we have about six or seven projects when we were able to demonstrate that we can actually work with CLD and GLD. We have now five, uh, six or seven projects which are going ongoing where we have, we are experimenting not only with the fact that it can be a material for structure, it can be an envelope system. So this was, uh, and the mathematics of it can be altered. So the flexibilities which is offering were also explored. So this is a modular lattice system. And we started, we have modeled this, and this house is already all under construction as well. And this is a complete lattice structure, which we are basically, we are not using any concrete. So this is one of the first houses we are experimenting, where we are saying, except for the infills and the foundation, there is nothing which is going to be any other material. So it's like we're saying we are trying to tell ourselves, and as studio very strongly, we are trying to tell ourselves that if I was to be only left with wood, how would I work? And I think slowly and surely we are moving towards that path. It's, uh, it's, it is challenging, it is difficult, it is not so easy to ignore other sub uh, materials. 
But I'm reminded, and I often remind my studio, I was at Vardha and at Gandhi Ashram Vardha a lot of time, some 20 years back, and I went there and I stayed in a room, and that room did not have any glass, it had just wooden shutters. And I was like, when I opened the window, I was like, where is the glass? And they're, they're like, we don't do any glass over here. Right? We only have a system of wooden shutters. And it was intriguing that first people in those places, and if the lesson to be learned for me was that you can actually work with minimizing materials and optimizing your materials. So we are in an age, we, are, we cannot ignore the fact that we are in an age of abundance. And sometimes abundance is also leading us to not take the material seriously. So this is some, these are all happening. Then we decided to work with a portal. I mean, we had already worked with a go up and go out a portal. This is an office building, but the difference is the span is larger. This is a 10 meter span, and we are working with portal structure here as well. Okay. And we are trying to see modularity again. We can't, I mean, the constraints are still there. We all understand as an industry, but GLT, is still a very dependable material, I guess, which is a new age material. And I think we knew it's only the way that we are trying to use it. People have used timber facades, but we are trying to use it in a way that it works as a screen, which allows us to eliminate the use of cloth or a curtain system or a energy system, which is energy consuming system inside. So in a way, we are working with, with trying to basically also resolve other economics, while this might be a costly affair, but in one way it saves a lot of money, which is, I can't tell you how, if this is a farmhouse, the recent budget on just curtains that was still communicated to the client was one CR. So you save that one CR. This is an outhouse in the same farm house residence. And again, we experimented with the same. It's similar to the project in Goa. As I said, we got some, some good things going because of the confidence that we have shown. And we have a public office complex, which is one of the first multi storied complexes happening in timber in Srinagar. And uh, we are very excited about it. And we are in a very early stage of developing this, but we are for sure, I mean, we have been shown, we have been given a green light to go ahead with, you know, exploring a timber sort of a high rise. It's not a high rise, it's just five story building. But in India, a five story building in timber, that's a plus. So we are happy to do that. And now I'm done basically touching upon a few experiments with timber. And I, we are looking at timber only unidimensionally as source, right? But we are not looking, here in this lab that we do, what we're looking at is how na nature educates us. And this is an example of aggregate structure experimentation, which has been borrowed from an you know, aggregation of, the, of almost an anthill ant ant aggregation. So this is a studio project, and people are trying to experiment with the various size of wooden aggregates and see how aggregates can eliminate at least a smaller scale. We don't, we don't want to, we, can't, we can do pavilions. We can do this exhibition hall somewhere. Somebody said this, there was nothing sustainable here. Maybe the next exhibition hall is a sustainable one with an aggregate structure, right? And this is a studio project, student's project, but it's, it's taken shape and if people are, I mean, there's a lot of study with scale of the aggregates and how it becomes stable and how it basically is able to take the load. So very, I mean, it's, I'm not getting the complete study, but it was an exhaustive study on how this was constructed. Uh, surfaces and Again, scaling the timber in a very different way. If you can see and see, right now this is not uh, this is not uh, this is a paper mache, not not the timber, but this could be very well timber. And if you you accept 
robotic intervention and CNC intervention, you can actually make the timber malleable. We all know that timber can be made malleable. So we can experiment with surfaces. I feel that we should, it's, a, it's high time that we are not living in, in 19th or 20th century. We are in the 21st century and we are waiting for people across the globe to tell us how to do this. I think we can, in our schools and our labs and our studios, can very well explore these kind of newer ways of working with timber. So this is how we are experimenting. And that's where I am. I think I, what I wanted to say was architecture is a leap of faith. And the faith has to be a total, and it has to be both in material technology and human ability to rethink the discourse that envelops these paradigms. That's it. Thank you. quite the case study, the practical application of everything that we've been talking about today. I request all the previous panelists to please come on the stage and, uh, and I would like to request Rajika to do the honors this time. Yeah.